Namaste yogis. You will notice a bindi on my forehead. Bindis have been worn by women in the Indian subcontinent for centuries. Bindi can be translated as point or dot. It is said to represent the point at which creation began and symbolizes our connection with the cosmos. Traditionally, bindi comes in powder or paste form and is red or maroon in color. A touch is applied with the ring finger and placed on the forehead between the eyebrows where the third eye chakra is located. Nowadays, you can get it in a more convenient and less messy sticker form. Women traditionally began wearing bindis uh, during their marriage ceremony and onwards, and it was often used to communicate to others that she was married. In other words, it served a similar purpose to the wedding ring. Women wear bindis for different reasons. Here are a few of them. In Hinduism, the red color symbolizes love, honor, and prosperity. Women may apply it to wish for a happy marriage or for the well-being or longevity of their husband. Wearing a bindi is said to aid in retaining energy at the third eye to help with the enlightenment. Nowadays, it is often used for a decorative purpose. You will see young kids and even babies wearing bindis. There are also many shapes, sizes, and colors. Now, some people may bring up the issue of cultural appropriation, that it is disrespectful for a person who is not from a culture to steal a symbol from that culture? I believe the answer to that question can be found in the saying, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Most people eat foods from other countries, or wear items from other traditions, or collect objects from other religions because they appreciate them. If anyone feels offended by that, then that person may inquire as to why they feel that way. It will help to look around to see just how many items around us originated from another country or culture. We are all interconnected. As for me, I will continue introducing ideas, teachings, and objects from India as well as other countries uh, because I truly appreciate them. Now let's begin our practice. Hands in Namaste. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bonaktu Sahaviyam Karavavahai Tejasvina Vadi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Take your hands behind your back, grab one wrist with the other hand and take a deep breath. If you have been following the sessions in order, today we will start discussing the niyamas or observances. There are five in total, and in this session we will discuss Shaucha. Shaucha means purity or clarity or cleanliness. As in the other yamas and niyamas, it is applied to action, speech, and thought. So, what do the Yoga Sutras say about Shaucha? Through cleanliness and purity of body and mind, one develops an attitude of distancing or disinterest towards one's own body and becomes disinclined towards contacting the bodies of others. 
also through cleanliness and purity of body and mind comes a purification of the subtle mental essence, a pleasantness, goodness, and gladness of feeling, a one-pointedness with intent, mastery over the senses, and a fitness qualification or capability for self-realization. First, let's take a look at the physical level. What does it mean to maintain purity or clarity or cleanliness of the body? Bathing regularly, brushing your teeth, washing your hands before a meal, perhaps. Xiao Cha also means to take care of our body. There is an ancient saying that the body is the temple of the soul. It is important to treat the body with respect. That means to give it rest when it is tired, nourish it when it is hungry, and to avoid substances, persons, or activity that may cause harm to it. While yogis are not fixated on our physical body, we also realize that it is the vehicle of our soul, so we try to take care of it and make it last as long as possible as we work on perfecting the soul. Eating wholesome foods can also be considered xiao cha. Taking care of the body is not the same as adorning the body. My teacher used to say, a superficial exterior reveals a superficial interior. It means that those of us who adorn our body with designer outfits, expensive jewelry, or heavy makeup, for example, have chosen to focus their efforts on the exterior instead of the interior, and they're advertising their spiritual ignorance through their appearance. Now let's take a look at what it is to purify the mind. I once heard a story of parents who had a child who was considered to be a genius. He did extremely well in his studies, was a talented musician, loved to do charity work, and on top of that, he was courteous and kind to others. Once a local television station picked up on the news and decided to interview the parents to find out if they did anything differently than other parents. The mother was a stay-at-home mom who encouraged her child to learn. The parents regularly took the child to museums and libraries and other places where there were learning opportunities. On weekends, they participated in charity work as a family. The parents never raised their voice or spanked the child but try to reason with him by talking to him like an adult. And when the interviewer asked what they thought was the most important factor in their child turning out that way, they answered to not own a television. And they added, because television pollutes the mind. We can purify our own mind by avoiding violent movies and television programs and instead by reading scriptures or helpful books or any material that will lead to personal growth. We can avoid the company of negative people who will plant negative thoughts in our mind. And we can rather seek the company of positive or highly evolved we can avoid crowds, concerts, sporting events, or any other place where verbal or physical violence may occur. We can start by applying Xiao Cha to our physical body to try to eat healthy foods, take rest when we need it, and respect the body without indulging in it. Then we can apply Xiao Cha to our speech. That means avoiding foul language, gossiping, arguing, or speaking evil of others. Then finally, we try to avoid impure thoughts from rising in the first place. 
It is not an easy task, but with regular, sincere, long-term practice, you will slowly make progress. And now let's focus on the physical body by doing yogasana. Let's stand up. We'll start with a standing stretch. Extend your arms forward in namaste or crossed. Stand with your feet slightly apart. Inhale, raise your arms up. And continue stretching upwards. Let your head fall back and look up. Eyes can be open or closed. If you feel like challenging yourself today, you can come to your tiptoes and hold the pose. Inhale, stretch up, and exhale, bend to your right. Pull back on your left shoulder, look upwards, and feel a nice stretch to your left side. Inhale, slowly come back to the center, and exhale, bend to your left. Pull back on the right shoulder, and look upwards. Relax. Inhale, return to the center, and exhale, slowly bring your arms back to your side. Shake out your wrists. So next is modified jumping jacks or full jumping jacks. You can choose one out of three versions. The first one, with your inhale, you raise both arms. Exhale, step out to the right and lower your arms. Inhale, come back to the center, arms up. Exhale, step out to the left and arms down. If you have shoulder issues, do this with your arms raised only halfway. Or if you feel like getting a good workout today, you can do full jumping jacks, as many as you like. So let's start together. Stand on the center of your mat. When you're ready, inhale, arms up, step out with your right foot. Exhale, come back to the center, arms down. Inhale, step out to the left, arms up. Exhale, come back to the center. Go side to side at your own pace. If you're doing full jumping jacks, do as many as you like and then take a break. When you finish, relax, come back to the center, move around if you like. Next is standing side twist. I will show two versions, so pick the one that works for you today. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, twist to the right and lower your arms into Namaste. Inhale, come back to the center, arms up. Exhale, twist to the left, hands in Namaste. Or if you have shoulder issues, keep your hands in Namaste as you twist from side to side. Let's try this together. Inhale. Exhale, twist to the right. 
Inhale, face the center. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, come back to the center. Go side to side at your own pace, doing about 10 in each direction. Let's do one more to each side. And lower your arms and relax. Next pose is Utkatasana or chair pose. Stand with your feet slightly apart and imagine sitting in a chair, bending your knees and extending your arms forward. Arms can be extended straight forward or you can raise them up for a little extra challenge and look upwards. The deeper you bend the knees, the more you will feel it in the legs. This is a leg and back strengthening pose. Next, we will add a twist. I will face the center so you can see better, but you can stay where you are. So we'll bring our hands in Namaste. Inhale and exhale. Twist to your right. Point your right elbow up, left elbow down, looking upwards. If you are more flexible, you might be able to bring your left elbow directly on top of your right knee. If not, don't worry about it. It's not an easy pose to relax in, but try to relax the best that you can. Inhale and exhale, come back to the center. We'll go directly into the other side. Inhale and exhale, twist to your left. Point the left elbow up, right elbow down. Looking upwards, and if possible, bring your right elbow on top of the left knee. Relax as you hold the pose. Inhale and exhale, come back to the center. Inhale, stretch upwards. Exhale, release your arms. Next pose is Rikshasana or Tree Pose. If you need extra support, feel free to lean against the wall. Take your right knee out to the side. Right foot can be on the floor or above left knee or to the base of the left leg. Bring your hands in Namaste. Inhale, take your arms up to the sky and hold the pose. Find a point along the floor or somewhere in front of you, an unmoving point, and stare at that point as you hold the pose. Use your breath to stabilize the pose. Hold it here for a few breaths. We are going to add a slight side bend today into wind-blown tree pose. Inhale, and with your exhale, slightly lean towards the left, as if you're a tree and the wind is blowing from the right side. Next, 
Now we will imagine that the wind is blowing from the left side. Inhale, come back to the center. And exhale, take your arms to the right side. Inhale, come back to the center and exhale, release the pose. Let's switch sides. When you're ready, take the left knee out to the side. Left foot can be on the floor or above the right knee or to the base of the right leg. Bring your hands in Namaste. Then with your inhale, take your arms up to the sky and hold. Set your gaze to an unmoving point and breathe deeply. Inhale and exhale, take the arms to the left side, imagining that the wind is blowing from the right side. Inhale, slowly come back to the center. And exhale, take the arms to the right side, imagining that the wind is blowing from the left side. Hang in there, we're almost done. Inhale, come back to the center. And exhale, release the pose. Shake it out and we'll come to our hands and knees. The next pose is Anjane Asana or Low Lunge Pose. Walk or step your right foot between your hands slightly towards the right hand side. Then bring your hands to your knee. You can hold it here and straighten your back. If you'd like to go deeper, you can bend your right knee and shift your weight forward. For more advanced students, you can inhale and raise your arms up, then look upwards, stretching upwards or even leaning back. You can also close your eyes. The left heel should be pointing upwards. This pose helps strengthen and open the hips as well as strengthens the various leg muscles. If this is too difficult, you can always keep your hands on your right knee or on the mat. Inhale, and with your exhale, bring your hands back to the mat. Step back with your right foot into table pose. And we'll do the other side. When you're ready, walk or step your left foot forward between your hands slightly towards the left hand side. Bring your hands to your knees, straighten your back. You can hold it here, or you can bend your left knee deeper, shifting your weight forwards. For advanced students, you can inhale, raise your arms up, looking upwards, stretching upwards, or leaning back. This time, the right heel should be pointing upwards. You can close your eyes if you like. Try to relax into the pose. Inhale and exhale, release. Bring your hands to the mat, step back with your left foot and relax. Let's take a little break in Balasana or child's pose. If you're a little worn out, you can take a couple deep breaths and try to recover. The next pose is Hanumanasana or monkey pose also known as the side split. It is a little difficult, so you may wish to take some support. If you have blocks, 
you can use blocks if you have two it's better to use them double so you get a little extra support or you can use blankets or cushions if you're taking support place it under your right hip your left knee is bent you're facing the direction of your right foot with the right heel on the mat hands to each side of the right foot then start slowly extending your left leg back if available if you are more flexible and do not need the support you can try coming into the splits the best that you can making sure to support your weight with your hands so that you do not overdo it For those who can go into a full split, you can inhale and raise your arms up, looking upwards. Trying to square your body as you reach up as high as you can, fingers spread wide apart. Inhale, and with your exhale, slowly and carefully come out of the pose using your arms to support your weight as you do so. Come back to table pose. And now we'll do the other side. If you're using support, place it on the mat. Extend your left leg forward. Right knee is bent. Place your hips on your support and start extending your right leg back hands to either side of the left leg or if you choose not to take support extend your left leg forward with the heel on the mat you can just hold it here if you wish or slightly slide the right leg back and or the left leg forward if you can go into a full split you can inhale and take both arms up looking upwards stretching upwards and try to square your body with your left foot. Relax and hold. There should be no pain as you hold this pose. If you have pain, then back off a little bit. Be gentle because it is a pose that you can easily get injured in. Inhale and with your exhale, slowly, gently come back into table pose. We can move around a little bit. And now let's come into a comfortable seated position. Very good. I hope it wasn't too much for you. Next we'll do neck circles. Let your head fall back and make 10 slow circles in each direction. Notice any tight spots or popping and clicking sounds as you do the movement. When you finish, come back to the center and relax. Next pose is Janushirshasana. We'll start by sitting in a wide V, then bending the left knee, extending out the right leg. We'll fold over the right leg. If you like to use a strap, just hook it around your right foot and set it on the mat for now. When you're ready, inhale, raise your arms up, stretch upwards, twist to your right. Exhale, push outwards as you fold over your right leg. If you're using a strap, you can grab your strap or grab your foot or anywhere along the right leg or mat and bring your face towards your right knee. 
Extend outward as you hold the pose. With our inhale, we'll stretch upwards, face the center, and exhale, lower the arms back to your side, release, and switch legs. If you're using a strap, hook it on your left foot and just set it there. And with your inhale, raise both arms up to the sky, look upwards, twist to your left, Exhale, push outwards as you fold over your left leg, bringing your head towards your left knee. Grab the strap or your left leg or anywhere along the mat. Inhale, slowly come back up, face the center. Exhale, lower your arms and release. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. Grab the feet with both hands and move the knees up and down. Next pose is Arda Bekkasana or Half Frog Pose. Lie on the mat face down, extending your legs and bringing your hands to the mat. We'll start by bending the right knee. Reach back with your right hand to grab the right foot. Use your left arm to support your upper body however you like. If your right hand cannot reach the foot, please use a strap. If you're more flexible, try to bring the right heel to the outside of the right hip, pushing down with your right hand. And hold it here. For more advanced students, there is a version that you do both legs at the same time. Full big kasana pose. Today we'll just do one leg at a time. This pose strengthens the back and stretches out the quadriceps. With your exhale, release the right leg and return it to the mat. We'll switch sides. This time, bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand and grab the left foot or use a strap. If you're more flexible, use your left hand to push the right heel to the outside of the right hip. With your exhale, release the left leg and extend it on the mat. We'll go straight into the next pose, which is Bhujangasana or Cobra Pose. Bring your feet as close together as possible. Place both hands on the mat, about shoulder width or slightly wider. When you're ready, press your hands into the mat and inhale, come up, raise your upper body. Look straight ahead. Squeeze your buttock muscles and thigh muscles, keeping your feet close together as you hold this pose for maximum benefit. Try not to turn your head to the left or right as you may injure your neck. Just relax and hold the pose. With your exhale, release the pose and come into Balasana or Child's Pose. Spread your knees apart, bring the big toes of your feet together, lower your hips over your heels, extend your arms forward and bring your head towards the mat. This is a good pose to take after any back bend pose. 
If you like, you can rock side to side and massage it out a little bit. Then lie on your stomach to prepare for the next pose. The next pose is called Falakasana or elbow plank or dolphin plank. Make fist with your hands, place the bottom of the toes on the mat and we're going to lift the hips. If it's too difficult, keep your knees on the mat. Otherwise, straighten your knees and hold it in this position. Make sure you're breathing. Try to make a straight line from the tip of your head all the way to your heels. This is a good exercise to strengthen the core. With your exhale, come to Balasana or Child's Pose and take a little break. If you like, you can rock side to side, gently massaging out the back. We are going to repeat this pose one more time. Slowly come back to the mat, stomach down, make fists with your hands, bring the bottom of your toes on the mat. And when you're ready, lift your hips and hold the pose. Make sure you're breathing. If there's any shaking going on, that's a great thing. That means you're really strengthening your muscles. With your exhale, release the pose and come into child's pose once again. Slowly come up and we'll do a pose called cat-cow pose. To get the correct hand position, bring one arm across the knees, then use the other elbow to touch that hand and bring that hand naturally on the mat. Then bring the other hand to the same level. Come to a table pose. And with your inhale, we'll lower the stomach and look upwards. With the exhale, we'll round the back and look down. Inhale into cow pose. Exhale into cat pose. And do about 10 total at your own pace. As you can probably tell, this is a good pose to increase spinal flexibility. When you finish, lie on the mat face up. The final pose of the day is Supta Garudasana. Bend your knees and cross the right leg over the left. Your arms can be extended out in a T or interlaced under your head. With your exhale, lower your knees to the left and turn your head to the right. Enjoy a nice stretch. Inhale, slowly return to the center. Continue lowering your knees to the right with your exhale and turn your head to the left. Relax.
This is a full body stretch and a nice way to end our asana practice. Inhale, slowly come back to the center. Exhale, release. We'll do the same thing with the other leg on top. So cross your left leg over right this time. And when you're ready, exhale, lower your knees to the left, turn your head to the right. Inhale, slowly come back to the center. Exhale, lower the knees to the right and turn your head to the left. Relax and enjoy the stretch. Inhale, come back to the center, and exhale, release the pose. Let's do some knee circles. Place your hands on your knees, and with your knees together, make 10 circles in each direction. We did a lot of exercises for the spine today, so this should relieve any remaining pressure in the spine. When you finish, give your knees a nice hug, stretching out the lower back just a little deeper. And release. Now we'll come to a seated position. Raise your right hand above the head, roll to your right side, and using both hands, push yourself up into a seated position. Since we talked about Shao Cha today, We'll do a purification exercise. This one is called Kapalabhati. In this practice, we forcefully exhale and let the inhale happen automatically. If you like to practice, place your hands on your stomach. With your exhale, your stomach goes in. With your inhale, it comes out. This breath oxygenates the body. And with long-term practice, your internal organs function better. Your body stays younger and your face gets a certain glow and that is why it is also called the shining skull breath. Kapalabhati should be practiced on an empty stomach. Good times to practice are before meals, early in the morning and before you go to bed. Sit with your back straight, hands on your knees, eyes closed. We'll close the mouth and breathe from the nose. When you're ready, begin the practice. If you are new to this, you can always have your hands on your stomach, making sure the stomach goes in as you exhale and comes out as you inhale. A good pace for beginners is about one breath per second. Experienced practitioners may go faster. When you finish, there should be a few seconds where you do not feel a need to breathe. This state is called kumbhaka and is a very prized state in yoga. Observe that state and slowly allow the breath to come back on its own without any effort.
We are going to repeat this practice one more time. Again, if you are new to the practice, you can place your hands on the stomach as you perform this exercise. When you're ready, begin. Now let's end the practice. Observe the state of kumbhaka for a few seconds, then allow your breath to come back normally. And now we are ready for final relaxation. Pause the video and take shavasana as long as you like. When you're ready, restart the video for our final chant together. So how did it go? Today's class was perhaps a little more difficult than normal. But you know by now that you can modify as you wish by using a strap or a wall or a chair whatever works for you. And if there are any poses that cause you pain or discomfort or that you would rather not do or you cannot do, you're always welcome to skip over them. We talked about the bindi at the beginning of class. If you have any knowledge, whether it's about India or yoga or even just simple household tips, some interesting tidbits that you would like to share with other yogis, Please post them in the comments section. And who knows, it might appear in a future video. Okay, we'll end our practice with our hands in Namaste. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Badrani Pashantu Makas Chitukha Bhagbhavet Om Shante Shante Shantihi Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.